Authentication in distributed systems Introduction Distributed system is susceptible to a variety of security threats. A principal can impersonate other principal and authentication becomes an important requirement. So principal means the entities which are participating or communicating with each other. For example, client server both can be the entities or the host machines and the users etc. They are called principles. So principles can impersonate other principles and the authentic authentication becomes an important requirement in this particular susceptible scenario in a distributed system. So authentication is a process by which one principle verifies the identity of other principle. For example, the client, the client can verify about the identity of the server, whether it is that particular server with whom it is intended to, it is communicating. Similarly, server can also want to verify the identity whether it is the client with whom it is going to communicate. So, in this particular scenario, it is called mutual authentication. So, authentication is a process by which one principle verifies the identity of the other principle both the principles they want to verify their identity then it is called a mutual authentication otherwise it is one way authentication so one way authentication only one principle verifies the identity of the other principle for example if the client want to verify whether it is that particular specific server or identity of that server then it is one way authentication or server want to identify the identity of the client. Mutual authentication, both the communicating principles verify each other that I explained. So the background and the definitions, authentication is a process of verifying that principles identity is claimed. So there are two things here. One is the verification, the other is the identity. So identification of a principle and then as claimed the identity it has to be verified when both these things are satisfied then it is called authentication so again i am reading it because both the terms are there in this particular definition of authentication authentication is a process of verifying that the principles identity is as claimed so authentication is based on possession of some secret information in the distributed system like password known only to the entities participating in the authentication. So when an entity want to authenticate another entity, the former will verify if the latter possesses the knowledge of that secret information like password, etc. A simple classification of authentication protocol. So classified based on the cryptographic technique which are used, the authentication protocols are listed as follows. There are two kinds of cryptographic techniques, symmetric key cryptography that is called also popularly known as a private key. The other cryptography technique is called asymmetric key cryptography and that is also called a public key. So based on two type of cryptographic techniques which is used, we will see the classification of authentication protocol later on. So first we will classify the cryptographic techniques based on these two techniques. So the first 
type of cryptography is called symmetric cryptography it uses a single private key to both encrypt and decrypt the data and asymmetric cryptography is called public key cryptography that uses the secret key that must be kept secret from unauthorized users and the another key that is also used called public which is made public for the encryption so data encrypted with the public key can be decrypted only by that corresponding private key so it's a pair of keys involved in asymmetric cryptography that is a pair of keys that is the secret key and a public key together is basically the keys which are used in asymmetric cryptography so data is encrypted with the public key can be decrypted only by the corresponding private key and the data signed with the private key can only be verified with the corresponding public key so in symmetric cryptograph crypto system authentication protocol can be designed using the following principle if a principal can correctly encrypt a message using the key that the verifier believes is known only to the principal with the claimed identity this act constitutes sufficient proof of identity so let us go ahead for the case studies so in this lecture we are going to see two different case studies one is called kerberos protocol the other is called secure socket layer protocol kerberos protocol so kerberos primarily addresses client server authentication using symmetric cryptography kerberos is an authentication system designed for mit project athena the goal of the project athena was to create an educational computing environment based on high performance workstation high speed networks and the servers of various types researchers envisioned a large scale 10000 workstation to 1000 servers open network computing environment in which individual workstation could be privately owned and operated therefore the workstation cannot be trusted to identify its user correctly to the network services kerberos is not a complete authentication required for secure distributed computing in general it only addresses the issues of client server interactions here we will discuss kerberos authentication protocol kerberos design is based on the use of symmetric crypto system together with the trusted third party authentication server before we go ahead let us see where this particular kerberos system is useful in a distributed system so the kerberos is primarily used in the distributed system in the distributed systems you know that there are the client the servers so if a client want to take the services which are offered by the servers maybe there are different type of services which are available in this mode or a distributed system for example the payment system and the services like file services and so on so if a client want to access to these services which are provided through different servers so the most important part is that the client has to produce its credentials in the form of a password so the password has to flow through the network and you know that this network is unsafe as far as if the password is flowing openly on the network even if it is encrypted the eavesdropper can tap this particular password and can replay it again 
so there are various issues involved that how can these services can be offered without this particular passwords to be flown on the network for this a kerberos authentication protocol is there which will provide the authentication between client and server without exposing the passwords on the network so you will see in this particular protocol in the discussion that the client and server they are authenticated with the help of passwords but the passwords will not flow on the network and yet the authentication is completed so that particular protocol is designed with that particular specific use it is designed and it's nowadays it has become a standard and is being used everywhere in most of the systems which are operating in the network that is in the form of distributed systems so this kerberos authentication protocol has two components so the first component is called the authentication server or it is also called kerberos servers the other component here which will provide the authentication is called ticket granting server or tgs so we will see that how using these kerberos authentication server and using ticket granting server it can authenticate between client and server without exposing the password to flow on the on the network so there is a process which is called initial registration where the each client registers with the with the kerberos server so this is kerberos server and the client has to register by providing its user id and the password so the kerberos server computes the key for that particular user or for that client that is called ku by applying a hash function on a password and this is one way function and stores this particular key in a database so it has a database constructed of all the registered clients on kerberos authentication server and the passwords are stored by hashing that is one way hash function is used and that password is stored in the kerberos database for that user so authentication in kerberos proceeds in three different steps so initial authentication at the login so kerberos server authenticates user login at the host and installs a ticket for the ticket granting server at the login host the second step says that obtain a ticket for the server and third is requesting service from the server so the terminology which is coming at all three step is called a ticket so the kerberos authentication protocol will not expose user password on the network rather it is a ticket based system so kerberos authentication server will issue the ticket for a particular session to the client and client will show that ticket to the server and server can understand the authentication and client and server can communicate thereafter with the secret key which they shared in this particular protocol in these stages so how the shared keys between the client and server is being exchanged with the help of a kerberos server that we will see and what is a ticket why how the ticket is basically solving the problem of not exposing the passwords on the network that also we are going to see so all three steps will involve the tickets so how the tickets are generated without exposing the password that we are going to see so the steps all three steps are shown over here so the components i explained you that kerberos contains the kerberos authentication server then second component here in this kerberos authentication protocol is ticket granting server 
and third is the actual server where the client and server this is called client where the client want to communicate with the server so this particular process will do the authentication you see in nowhere the password is now flowing so user will send the request for ticket granting ticket with putting his username and authentication server will give the ticket and a session key and now then client will use its password there itself in the on the host to decrypt this particular ticket and session key because the client is already registered with the kerberos with its user id and a password so now the password will not flow and then it will extract the ticket and session key and then make a request for this particular server to a ticket granting server so ticket granting server through the kerberos authenticator and it will try to understand or identity of the client and then issue a ticket and a session key for this particular server client will use this ticket and the session key and directly get the request for the service from the server and the server will authenticate and in this particular in these process a secret key will be exchange between the client and the server and thereafter all the messages which client will send using that particular secret key it will be encrypted and sent so the information which will be flowing on the network will be secure having the secure communication so i have explained you the real application and the use of kerberos authentication process let us see all three steps of the kerberos authentication so initial authentication at the login uses at a kerberos server and is shown in the algorithm this is the algorithm let you be a user who is attempting to log on to a host so user will give its identity not in the form of a password but only it has to identify the name of the user to the host let us say it is you who want to use the kerberos authentication service or who want to use the server but it has to authenticate it with the help of kerberos authentication protocol so this particular host so user and host there are two things means in the normal system user can come put its login and can start accessing to the host now in the distributed system it is connected to the network of several other things so user has to give its identity to the host and host will send this identity user for a ticket granting server service to the kerberos kerberos will retrieve the ku and k of tgs from the database based on the username record which is stored in its database in the kerberos and then generate a new session key k and create a ticket granting ticket and this particular ticket that is that will be generated by the kerberos is in this particular form which is encrypted with ticket granting service that is a secret key of a ticket granting service and this is given to the host host after receiving this particular ticket it will since it is encrypted with the secret password of you so as far as the user is concerned it will produce its password and use the password to decrypt this particular message which is sent by the kerberos recover 
the session key, recover the ticket for ticket granting service. And if the decryption failed, then the login will also be failed. So, this is the initial authentication at the login step. So, it is explained again here in this particular slide. So, in step 1, user u initiates login by entering his username. Here, there is no password is given. In step number 2, login host forwards the login request and the ID of the ticket granting service to the Kerberos. So, there no password is being sent, only the login request and the ID of ticket granting service is given to the Kerberos, is sent on the network. So, network message does not flows the password. So, that you have to observe. So, in step number 3, Kerberos server retrieves the secret key of U and also the key of a ticket granting service from the database generating a new session key K and creates a ticket granting ticket as I explained you. Where U is the identity of the user who wishes to communicate, TGS is the identity of the ticket granting server and K is the session key, T is the timestamp, L is the ticket's lifetime. K of TGS is the key shared between TGS and Kerberos. So, this is the secret key between the Kerberos and the ticket granting service. So, the ticket granting service, this particular message is encrypted with K TGS. So, in step number 4, Kerberos server encrypts the ticket granting service, the identity of TGS, the session key and so on gives to the host. Step number 5 on receiving this message from Kerberos server, host H prompts the user for his password and using that particular password, it will decrypt this particular message which is sent by the Kerberos and recovers the session key K which it is going to use it. So, if the so session key will be retrieved out of this particular message. Thus, the user is authenticated if the host is able to decrypt the message which is received by the Kerberos. Upon successful authentication, the host saves the new session key K and a ticket granting ticket for further use and erases the password from the memory. So, password use is over and the key and ticket granting ticket for the ticket granting service both are stored. The ticket granting ticket is used to request the server tickets from the ticket granting service. Note that the tickets are encrypted using K of TGS. So, the key shared between TGS and server, Kerberos server. So, the user will not be able to decrypt this part. So, this part will go as it is without decryption. So, this is how the client will now communicate with the ticket granting service. So, as I told you that this ticket of TGS which is encrypted will go as it is. So, the client executes the step shown in the algorithm to request the ticket for the server from TGS. Basically, the client sends the ticket ticket TGS to TGS requesting a ticket for the server S. So, ticket granting service will issue the ticket for that particular server session. So, the first step is the client will request to the ticket granting service through this particular message. Some part of the message is basically received by the Kerberos authentication service. So, that ticket granting service will authenticate that this is the client which is authorized by the Kerberos server and the request for that server name is being encrypted and sent. So, ticket granting service after receiving this particular message recovers K, K means the session key from TGS by decrypting with that particular key, the secret key between Kerberos and 
the ticket granting service then it will recover the t1 t1 is the time stamp from c of t which is decrypted with that session key to check the timelines of t1 if the so if the lifetime of this particular ticket is over then it will not be allowed to make a session that is why so why this is done is to avoid the replay attack with respect to the local clock and it will generate a new session key k so create the server ticket ts which is encrypted with that particular session key so it will contain the new session key the client credentials and the server also credentials and the time stamp and the lifetime of this particular ticket this particular message tgs will send to to c encrypted with the session key now c will recover k this k and this particular ticks ticks is basically the ticket for the server which is sent by the ticket granting service by decrypting the message with its own key that is k so because the ticket is susceptible to the interception and replay does not by itself constitute sufficient proof of identity for authentication the principal presenting a ticket must also demonstrate the knowledge of session key k named in the ticket so the authenticator which contains the time stamp to avoid this replay attack and also this is the client's identity this is called authenticator this also will be given or produced to the ticket granting service so k is the session key provides this particular demonstration so in step number 1 to request a ticket for the server the client c presents its ticket granting ticket along with the authenticator that i explained in step number 2 ticket granting service decrypts the ticket ticket granting ticket with its with its secret key which is being encrypted with the help with, by the kerberos and we shared with that particular ticket granting service and this will recover that session key k will verify the authenticity of the authenticator by decrypting the authenticator that is the identity of the client and the time stamp t1 and this is has to be decrypted with the with the key k if both the decryptions in step number 2 are successful and t1 is timely the ticket granting service is convinced of the authenticity of the ticket and create an a ticket for the server this ticket is returned to the client in step number 3 and step number 4 the client recovers k session key and and ticks that is the ticket for the server by decrypting it with k third step is now the client will request the service from the server using this much of information which it has obtained by communicating with kerberos and communicating with ticket granting service so ticket granting service has given a ticket to communicate with the server and also it contains a session key or a secret key which will be used for encryption between client and the server let us see these steps so the client will send to the server that encrypted ticket and also the authenticator of the client and the time stamp which will contain and which will have the session key which is given by the ticket granting server now s the server will recover the session key k from ticks by decrypting it with its secret key ks it will recover 
t2 by decrypting with k and check the timeliness of that timestamp t2 with respect to the local clock. Now server will communicate to the client with, with the new timestamp t2 plus 1 and which is encrypted with the with with the common key k which is being given by the ticket granting service so all these things are explained so the weakness is that there is no provision for the host security that means the passwords are stored in the host and if the host is untrusted then it will become a problem to the entire network so this problem is resolved in the Kerberos version 5 which will introduce the pre-authentication to solve this particular problem that is explained here in the slide. Now the next important protocol is secure socket layer protocol. So the secure socket layer protocol was developed by Netscape and is a standard internet protocol for secure communication. So the Kerberos authentication was that without flowing the password on the, inter on the network, how the authentication is to be carried out with the help of servers. Now another protocol called SSL, wherein the host, if it want to access to a website or a server, on the internet, then what are the problems it is going to face is that authentication, how it is going to carry out the authentication. So we are going to use this particular protocol for the authentication on the internet. And if the authentication between the host and the website, that means host how it has to authenticate that it is communicating with the proper website and the proper website has to authenticate to the to the host. This is very important in the sense if let us say it is a payment system or a banking payment system then the authentication of the host as well as the website is very very important otherwise credit card information may be hacked or may be leaked and it will siphon out all the money. So this particular SSL protocol is going to be very useful. We are going to see the use of this SSL protocol. The secure hypertext transfer protocol HTTPS is basically a communication protocol designed to transfer encrypted information between computers and world wide web. HTTPS is HTTP using secure socket layer SSL. SSL resides between the TCP IP and the application. Requiring no changes to the application layer, the different application can use this SSL to get this particular communication secure. So SSL is used typically between server and the client to secure the connection. One advantage of SSL is that it is an application independent protocol. So higher level protocol can layer on top of SSL protocol transparently. SSL protocol, let us go and detail about the features of SSL protocol. SSL protocol allows client server applications to communicate in a way so that eavesdropping, tampering, message forgery are prevented, which is very important for the customers who are doing the transaction the banking related transactions where the information of credit card or a bank details are basically sent. So SSL protocol in general provides the following features, endpoint authentication, the server is the real party that the client want to talk to, not someone faking the identity. <coughs> For example, if whether it is a proper bank website or some other fake website. So has to be authenticated by the person or a client who want to use it. Then second part, second feature of SSL is the message integrity. If the data exchange with the server 
has been modified along the way it can easily be detected. So, the messages which are being exchanged at both the principal has proper integrity. Third one is confidentiality. So, the data which is flowing is encrypted. Hacker cannot read this information by simply looking at the packet on the network. So, SSL record protocol takes the application message and fragments the data into the manageable blocks, encrypts, add headers and the resulting unit is sent to the TCP. Now, another important part of this SSL protocol is the handshake protocol. So, the client and the server. So, if the client is let us say a customer of a bank and the server is let us say online bank, then the SSL protocol first it will handshake and establish the parameters on which they are going to provide you the secure way of communication that is why it is called handshake protocol. So, allows the server and the client to authenticate each other and to negotiate an encryption algorithm and cryptographic keys before the application transmits or receives its first byte of data. This is very, very important. That means, both they will communicate and negotiate this information. That means, which encryption algorithm it is going to use and if it is decided then what is the keys and they have to exchange. Once this is being negotiated and also it is supported at the client's browser and at the server's website. So, those technical details are negotiated and they will follow this in further communication for the secure way of communication. Let us see the handshake protocol of SSL. So, first SSL client sends a client hello message and in this hello message it will give the information about the client's order of preferences about which of these encryption algorithms it is supporting at its end and also some random byte signature is being sent on this particular hello message. SSL server it will respond to the hello message after choosing from the options given by the client about the encryption methods, encryption algorithms or the cryptographic keys from this particular list it will it will choose and which is provided by the client. So, so SSL server also sends its digital certificate. So, digital certificate is basically a certificate by which the client can authenticate that this is the correct website. So, digital certificate is, a, is provided through a certification agencies which is well known to everyone. For example, if let us say a certificate is taken out from some company let us say X which is not well known, then that certificate is not authorized certificate or is not known to be a proper certificate. Now, if Microsoft gives a certificate, Microsoft is well known company, then that certificate is authenticated or properly verified. So, digital cert certificates are issued from certification agencies which are well known. So, if a server requires the digital certificate from the client also for authentication, then server also inform that please send the client certificate. That includes the list of types of certificates supported and the distinguished names of acceptable certification authorities also it will server will provide that from these listed certification authority certificate has to be provided by the client. Now, SSL client verifies the digital signature on SSL server's digital certificate and checks the cipher suit chosen by the server acceptable. SSL client 
using all the data generated in the handshake so far create a pre-master secret for the session. If SSL server sent a client certificate request, the SSL client sends another signed piece of data which is unique to this and will obtain the digital certificate and send it in the part of handshake. So, SSL server verifies the signature on the cert client certificate, SSL client sends SSL server a finished message, SSL server sends SSL client a finished message on the other side for the duration of SSL session, SSL server and SSL client can now exchange the messages that are encrypted with the shared symmetric key which are exchanged in this handshake. So, all the handshake steps which I have told that is being listed over here in this handshake protocol. So, both client and server authentication, there is a step that requires data to be encrypted with one of the keys in the asymmetric key pair and is decrypted with the other key of the pair. For server authentication, the client uses server's public key to encrypt the data that is used to compute the secret key. The server can generate the secret key only if it can decrypt that particular data with the correct private key. So, for that basically we will do the authentication of a server. So, only genuine server or authenticated server can only be able to do this step. For client authentication, the server uses the public key in the client certificate to decrypt the data the client sends during step number 5 for handshake, the exchange of finished information messages that are encrypted with the secret key of the, of the client confirms that that authentication is complete. So, SSL server requires the client authentication, the server verifies the client's identity by verifying the client's digital certificate that I have already explained. So, conclusion, authentication is a process by which one principal verifies the identity of the other principal. So, it involves the identification is to be produced, identity is to be produced in the form of, in the form of digital certificates and these particular and also with the help of secret key in a public in asymmetric key crypto system. So, for example, in a client server system, the client and server may need to verify each other's identity to assure that each is talking to the right entity that we have seen in both these protocols that is in the Kerberos as well as in the SSL. Generally, authentication is based on possession of the secret information like password that is known only to the entities participating in the authentication. For a successful authentication, the entity must demonstrate the knowledge of the right secret information. So, most importantly, we have seen two different type of protocol. One is Kerberos, wherein the password is protected from the network and the other protocol SSL wherein how the secure communication between the two partners that is client and server can takes place on the internet. So, both these particular protocol has lot of use and is being heavily used and we have basically able to express it in this part of the lecture, the details. Thank you.